If you want to create a visual depiction of values and yet not create a full-blown chart, you can use a feature called spark lines. A short definition of a spark line is an in-cell chart, a chart within a given cell. As we look at the data in columns A and B, we've got data for the first nine months of the year. The data is improving generally. Let's show this in a single cell. Let's show what's going on here by using a spark line. We insert a spark line by going to the Insert tab and then choosing one of three options under Spark Lines. Let's start with the Line option. Choose Line. It asks us which data do we want to use here. The data range itself will be these cells right here from B4 down to B12. We selected B13 as we entered the command. Therefore, that's where the location range is. That's where the spark line will appear. Click OK. And this is a visual depiction of what has happened numerically in that time frame. Now, we can make it look a little bit more prominent if we go to spark line color, possibly changing the color. But how about changing the weight of it, meaning the thickness? Maybe make it uh, twice as thick. Now, you can see that's a bit larger. Let me also zoom in on this too so we can see this a bit better. Now, it could stand alone the way we see it here. Another option you might consider using, and recognize now that when this cell is selected, we have a design tab in the ribbon. The options to the left under show allow us to indicate the high point, the low point, possibly all the points. We can just put in markers for all the points that way if we wish to. That's another option here. Another approach to this could have been that we might have used a different type of spark line. So over on the left-hand side, we see type. Maybe column would have been better. Maybe, maybe not. And then we see the option there. And here too, by unchecking high point and low point, we don't see the color as much. So depending upon which option you want, I think a line or a column chart will make sense. Now, the data that we have here in columns D, let me scroll to the right a little bit so we can see this better. Columns D through P, we might want to have a spark line for each region here. So this time we can select this data first, then insert tab, spark lines. Once again, we'll start with line. The data range that contains the data we want to depict, all of these cells here, click OK. And like before, we might want to quickly jump over to sparkline color and change the weight of that to give it more prominence, something like that possibly. And again, consider highlighting all of the markers or just the first point, the high point, the low point, that idea. Recognize that you could make a column width change here that could distort the look of this. Now, I say distort maybe in quotes. If we make column Q wider here, these lines tend to flatten out. If we make it a lot narrower, we accentuate the change. Now, where is the proper place here? Well, it's your call. What looks best here? If you put in the points, maybe that'll exaggerate it even more so depending on how you're using this. So if we select these cells and go back to the design tab and put in points, markers they're called for every point here, this might accentuate or de-accentuate it even differently. And another option here, which you probably wouldn't use, but it is related, has the same effect. What if we take the rows that these are in and make them a bit taller? So that has the same effect too. So. I think you want to be alert to the idea, if you're using spark lines, the actual line option here, you might want to consider the effect of what happens if you make the column wider or narrower, or the row uh, taller or shorter. Now, a third option here under spark lines probably would not be very helpful for these first two examples we've seen. But the other data to the right, it's going to work a little bit better. And let me readjust these row heights by clicking the upper left corner, and then double-clicking. This data here has negatives in it, as some data does. Let's simply decide to put spark lines here, probably make the column wider. This time, insert, and the spark line options we'll choose is called win loss. Recognize that in the preview there, the positives will be above the line, the reds below the line. 
the data range here, right there, click OK. And we see these. So we can see at a glance what's positive, what's negative. We could also have done this, by the way, below the data here. And sometimes you might have spark lines below or to the right of the data, depending upon what kind of data you've got. So here too, insert. Choose win loss as an option again. Same data as before. Choose OK. And we see that option. To enhance this, you might want to consider in either case here, also putting in under axis here. You can choose other options here that actually uh, give you choices here to show the axis. So we see what's happening there. Possibly we could do that here. We can also do this in line charts. If we want to use lines, actual spark lines, the line option here in this data, we can certainly do that as well too. Select this data here. On the design tab, choose line, and we see the line entries. We might want to consider here showing the axis. So we'll choose axis here, general axis type. How about date axis type? We don't have that here. How about showing the axis? And we see the axis there. So that is going to be helpful too. And we could use that same feature if we switch this to column spark lines as well. So I think you can see how readily we can use the spark line capability. When we don't want full-fledged charts, we simply want a depiction, a visual depiction of what's happening to data, usually over a time period, by using spark lines.